Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, Alex Bennett, it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the mug you're looking at is Stephen Pearl. Nah, we're busting out of here, see? We're gonna get out of here. Nah, we ain't staying. I'm warning all the screws, see? Nah. Nah. I, I once said I had a Siamese cat who did a beautiful impression of oh, yeah. Ed, Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> and I'd say, go to... go ahead, Shabbos, do Edward G. Robinson, and I would touch him somewhere where I knew he'd meow, because he meowed like crazy. Uh-huh. Went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, man, right. The gangs are coming back, say, right. Do you ever have cats? I got three of them right now. Oh, you do? Yes, you do. You always talk about yeah, it. Yeah, they're all walking and running all over the place right now. Do they, do they pretty well congregate with each other and just say fuck you no no the two of them are brothers so they like you're either cuddling or fighting and uh the third one muddy waters is like kind of an independent blues man so he's uh he's, he's always very friendly uh, he's like a dog two uh, of them are like dogs one of them is like a are the other two affectionate towards you uh yeah well yeah they, they rub against me and one of them loves belly rub so he's always like you know calling me and like give me belly rub give me belly rub rah, rah, rah. Yeah. And the other one kind of like spoiled. And I like, had yeah, five cats. I'm the boss. Hey, man, he's the Edward G. Robinson. Yeah, I had five cats once. Five? Oh, God. Yeah. That's a lot of cats. Oh, God. It's like a Catholic mother. Oh, my God. Yeah, so. no, I had a lot of them. They were, they were a, lot of, a lot of cats. And um, they all had their individual personality. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, amazing. Yeah. You'd think, yeah. oh, a cat is a cat. Okay? No. Uh, no. They all have their own personality. You know them, yeah. They all, uh, I yeah, had so. one that was perfectly she was a female and she was perfectly evil ah. she was really evil that's a woman same man yeah and she ran the house with the other cats and then she would disappear we called her the ghost she would disappear for days at a time in an apartment <laughs> and then we'd find her in some little laundry basket where she decided to pee all over it oh lovely <laughs> she was a horrible cat but oh. she, and uh, then I had Shabbos, who I loved. Shabbos. He was a one, oh, he was such a one, oh. he was my firstborn. And he oh. was just, he was a Siamese, and he was so wise, and uh, he was my pal. You oh. know? He, and he knew, you know one thing a, a cat knows about everything you do? Uh-huh. Sure. If you bring a woman home and you fuck her, they're watching. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> In fact, one time I was having sex with somebody, and then I looked up at my pillows, and all five cats were sitting on the pillow watching. Yeah. One of them was going to give her the triple thrust. Yeah. Hey, and, and when I was through, they all held up numbers. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. Four, yeah. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> but they know everything about your life. They know your happiness. You know. And I had one cat that would look at me like, "Well, I've seen them come and I've seen them go, but I'll be here." Yeah, that's cool. That's you know. Nice. Every time I bring a new woman home, so you know. <laughs> then I married one of them, and they went crazy. They uh, the the cat runs away, so yeah. So uh, how's things going there with you? And uh, you, so all the are the casinos closed again? I think no, they're open. I went the other the, the other day with a friend of mine. You know, you just wear your mask and you play your games and blah blah blah. I mean, are they stupid or what? <laughs> I don't like the mask, man. I have trouble breathing with it, so, you know. Well, no, I don't like the mask either, but they're essential. You know, it's like you and I didn't like the condom either. (laughs) But during the age of AIDS, they were mandatory. Of course, I put pinholes in both of them, and I suffer twice over. Uh, Yeah, but the thing is that I agree with you, especially I went out the other day wearing my mask in hot weather. And that is not a pleasant thing. Uh-huh. You do find yourself unmasking when you oh, don't see any, when you don't see anybody around, or you don't see you see somebody way down a, a block or uh, blocking yeah. back of you, or whatever. I'll pull the mask down and breathe a little bit. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah, I won't wear it while I'm driving. But then when I'm going past somebody, man, that thing goes right up. You know? Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. Little, so. And 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 you know we we've gotten a new uh, kind of cultural thing going that I really kind of like. 
It's, it's things that we will look upon with great memories in future days. Uh, and one of them is what I now have determined as we're talking as the um, uh, mask pinch, where you put the mask on and then you pinch it up here so uh, that uh, that little metal thing yeah. fits your nose. Yep. <laughs> They're going to be styles. It's going to be like, you know, who are you wearing? You know, oh, Ralph Lauren. That's wonderful. Who are you wearing? Oh, my goodness. That's the... Well, I do get a little jealous of people uh, who uh, are have really nice masks. Oh, yeah. I saw one with the Rolling Stones logo on it. I want it immediately. <laughs> yeah, but I'm wondering how good they are. Now, here's what happened. I, I, I'm online. I see some uh, masks for sale. There's a, and they look nice. They had they had a nice look to them, and they were black. And they were there was one that was purple. So I bought one for my wife that's purple. I bought uh -huh. one for me that is black. Okay, and I order it, and they say, okay, your order will be coming soon. Uh, they didn't say how soon. And then I looked at the order. I checked the shipping on it. It's being shipped from China. Oh, it's going to take a while. My turtle. Well, yeah, it's, it's the year of the turtle, so I guess, yeah. or whatever. Year yeah. of the rat. A rat is bringing it. I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, I was just amazed uh, at, at um, oh, I just had a dizzy spell here. What oh, look at oh. Whoa. Hello. Yeah. Anyway. Hi, free hi. Huh? Free hi, man. Yeah. Mm, let me drink All some right. coffee okay. here. Yeah. Uh oh. Anyway, was what was I saying? Oh yeah, so um, I, I think there's a certain redundancy in maybe trying to prevent coronavirus by uh, ordering a mask from the country that gave it oh, to yeah, us. Oh yeah, where it came from? Yeah, this this mask is made out of genuine fat. Yeah, yeah, and I'm wondering, I'm, 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 I'm wondering when the next uh, um, um, person is going to say, "I sent away for these masks from China, and then I got the coronavirus because yeah. they put them on." It's like getting the flu from a flu shot. You know? Yeah. So when they come, come when they come, I'm spraying them down. Uh, yeah. Oops. Look out. I, I don't I like the cheap blue one. And yeah, I don't like the fact they came from China. So <laughs> from China, China. That's what yeah. our president calls it. China. Huge man from China. China. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so are, are a lot of people wearing masks? In your yeah, area? yeah, yeah. Well, it's weird because uh, I went. Because I went you to... got temperatures, or what's the temperature outside today? Oh, I, it's probably 100 right now. It's going to get like 107 later. So it's yeah, crazy. yeah. So then you go out with a mask. Yeah. Oh, God. It's that, fun. It's that's good. impossible. Well, you got a car, right? I got me a car. I got a good car. So you get in the car and you're isolated from other people. Yeah. So you don't wear the mask in the car. No. But it's the one place you could because it's got air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as soon as they get out of the car, the mask goes on. So. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you go to the bank, give me all your twenties. Yeah, yeah. What do you do when you're going to rob a bank now? Take the mask off. Take the mask off. See, uh, I know where the money is. You got to get up pretty in the early day. Well, what I said, said well, you know, years ago in uh, in Islamic countries, the burqa was invented so women's faces couldn't be seen. Yep, that's right. Right, and now I consider this kind of like a health burqa <laughs> because you actually you can go like. So was she beautiful? And you go, well, her eyes were wonderful. <laughs> you know, because you don't see faces anymore. Yep. It's like the Iranian you know? strip club that featured full facial nudity. You right? know, boy, she has large breasts. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, but what does her face look like? I don't yeah, know, right. but let her keep like, the mask on. Yeah. <laughs> Looks a bit like Sebastian Cabot from here. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I mean, it, uh, but we're going to uh, we're going to have a whole new uh, thing to you know, kids in the future will not know about the mask pinch. So, no, no, no. so get used to that. Where do, now, here's a question I had because we got some. Oh God, the eyes are itching. God, yeah, you're falling apart on me. Come on, man, breathe for me, Presley. Breathe. Oh, boy, breathe. I'm trying. I'm trying, but my eyes are itching. And anyway, says, where was I? Okay, so um, uh, we were talking about things that that kids will remember and. This is something that I think no kid will ever forget because this was the time they had to stay indoors and they couldn't go to school. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know what, what's with these kids today, but I hear from kids and from their parents that their kids are really upset they can't go to school. Oh, really? <laughs> 
Would you have been upset if you couldn't go to school for oh, three or four no, months? No, no. I do my homework in the morning and watch cartoons the rest of the day. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm very glad I couldn't go to school. It was like elementary school, which but, I couldn't stand. But kids today will have a whole different memory of growing up. They oh, yeah. really will. It's Your yearbook. I didn't know that person. I didn't know that person. I didn't know that person. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so there's this like a snoopy. Yeah, so it's it's kind of it's kind of sad, you know. It's kind of sad. To kids. It's their fucking problem. Really. I think the reason kids miss school is not that they miss learning, because kids never miss learning. Oh no! Uh, you know, no no kid worth his salt misses learning. Right. Ooh, that's okay. Little... If they like learning, then they're the kid we don't talk to. That's right? right. They're the weirdo. Uh, they they're the one in class who goes. Don't you remember you gave us a homework assignment last oh, night? Oh, <laughs> Boom, yeah. yeah. Or, bef like Mario, or before it's over. Me. Don't we have any homework tonight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Shut up, kid. You're dead, Hollingsworth. Yeah. But the thing that we were really, I think, bothered about, uh, and it's, it's true, um, is that kids don't have that socialization. And they do like the socialization of dealing with other students Sure. Uh, you know what goes on in the play yard and so on and that's what they really miss is the social aspect of it sure. yeah mm -hmm. i wouldn't miss it because i was never social in high school exactly yeah i had friends but i could do without it too exactly exactly so uh you know um um that's where <laughs> we are today that's where we are today. it's the too bad planet. it's too the, bad but the animals let the ferrets take over who cares yeah exactly uh, oh, but uh, I don't know what kids are going to remember. You know, they, 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 a lot of them aren't going to be able to remember their graduation. Yeah. Uh, Mario Cuomo, our governor, was talking about his daughter, who the thing she missed the most was she was graduating from college, and she didn't uh, get, they didn't have a college graduation. Yeah, they I, sent her to the diploma in the mail. And, but she said to her, she said, Dad, she said, you know, I miss not getting, having my graduation. But you know what I gained? And she, he said, what? He said, an education. Uh, he said, being okay. around you during this whole crisis, I've got oh, yeah, an well, education. Yeah. yeah. You know. Sure. And I'm sure Sunday well, dinner at the Cuomo House is a lot of fun, too. So. Well, they were going to open uh, restaurants to indoor indoor eating, and they decided not to here. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, uh, New Yorkers are getting less... Uh, good about this whole thing. Yeah, I'd say so. And he said, when I see pictures of kids outside a bar congregating, uh -huh. he said, I'm pulling all this back. He said, I don't want to have to close anything down, but I'm not going to open up indoor eating because we yeah. don't have... Well, there are two factors. He said, people are not acting as responsibly as they once did. And secondly, he says, we have all these people coming in from out of state who are going to go eat dinner. <laughs> you know? He said, and they're going to carry this virus with them. So I don't want, I don't want these, I don't want these establishments open to serving meals. You know, it's a mess. What you doing? So, uh, so uh, we don't get indoor eating, which is fine yeah. with me. You know. Yeah, let's go I'll eat home. I can microwave something. I, I, you have no idea how much money I've saved oh, by sure. not having to take my wife out to dinner. Yeah. Because she it. says this is date night. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, we got and, Anna Libby's beats. We're staying home. We don't yeah, care. They're, they're, but believe it or not, women, if you're listening, there's not a guy out there who doesn't dread the momentary experience of having his loved one saying uh, that we're, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, that we're going out on date night. This is date night. Yeah, yeah, date night. Hey. What's that? What's that? You know. Uh. What, you go out, you sit at a table, you pay for dinner. Date night means yeah. the guy pays for dinner. All right. Except I have to hand it to Marjorie. She has been nice enough to, you know. Nice when they kick in a little bit. Yeah, know? she 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 picks up the tab every now and then. Yeah, and I do too. I mean, you know, when we go out to eat. Yeah. But we've been ordering in, you know, and it, it, thank God our favorite restaurant does deliver delivery. through yeah, one of those delivery things. I don't uh -huh. know. Oh yeah, the drone comes over. Yeah, and we we uh, we get somebody to get buy our groceries at Costco, and we just sit <laughs> here in the house and go crazy and yell at each other. There you go, like a nice little couple, like the Lockhorns of Levittown, nothing like. It. Yeah, so uh, I uh, I should say in our last fifty seconds we've got here, uh, what are your plans for this week? 
Uh, to get through the week, that's about it. That's it's about it. And, yeah. uh, you drink coffee and smoke weed and stay in and try to stay cool, you know. By the way, I just played my first video game in which they smoke weed in the game. <laughs> I like it, I like it, but yeah, I'd rather do real play. Yeah, yeah, they smoke weed in the game, and it's two lesbians smoking the weed, so that's hey, how politically yeah, correct fun. it is. Hey, listen, great. I've run out of time. Oh, God. Oh, no, I don't mean with you and I. I'm dying. Oh, you're so, dying. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put me in the will. Hey, we're running out of time. Hey, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? You got it, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Pearl. Yeah. Sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, look I look at me. I My pallor. Do you notice what I got to do? There we go. Forgot to turn the lights on. I was in at the bathroom uh, doing my stuff just before the show. I have to be very careful to do that uh, because uh, I had lately have been having these horrible urges to urinate. It, ha it has something to do with my, uh, uh, <clears throat> my uh, prostate thing, which I haven't heard from my doctor at all, so I finally wrote him just now and said, you know, I think maybe you want to do something, right? You gotta, gotta do some stuff to, to check in on me, like do a CT scan, like we were supposed to do. I haven't heard a thing from him. Like he doesn't give a shit, you know. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm hoarse again tonight. I don't know what it is. There is something in this apartment, and I can't put my my foot on it or whatever. I don't know. Anyway. Mm. Hmm. So, um, let me see. Uh, a couple of things I just want to make note of. Uh, in case you haven't subscribed to me on uh, on my YouTube channel, I I didn't do much. I just got up to a thousand so I could monetize it, and then people kept joining and joining and joining, and finally I got up to like a thousand and eighty, which is not a lot, but it's some. All of a sudden, I go on one day, and they've just yanked away 60 of my uh, of my uh, subscribers. Um, I don't know why, so I write uh, YouTube, but they never write you back, and they never tell you why. Uh, and so I've just been putting a thing on it that people should probably, you know, let me know uh, or go over and subscribe to me. And I put out a plea uh, that way, and... Um, I'm up to 100 and, is it 1,068 now, so I've only got about 12 more to go before I'm back to where I was, and then they'll probably yank it away from me, right? Right. So, anyway, I just uh, I want you if, you, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, then subscribe to it. If you want to find out how to go to uh, uh, the link for Zoom, it's on our uh, thing. It's on our... Uh, gabnet.net it's also listed on my facebook page at facebook.com forward slash a bennett and then it's also uh, where else oh it's right down at the bottom here if you're looking at us on youtube right now it just has a link right there all you do is you just click on that link you don't even have to have zoom installed in your machine Zoom does all the heavy lift, lifting. But if you want Zoom, you can certainly get it by going to zoom.com. Listen to my voice. It's hoarse tonight. I can't stand it. I, I just, you know, I think there's something in this apartment. But I don't know. Let me see here. Uh, first of all, let's uh, admit uh, Phil Meyer, who was waiting in line there. And uh, well, let me see. Okay. And am I all right? Okay. Let me... Uh, let me go over to that. I have a new button for it. There we go. There we go. Hello there, Phil. How are you? Hey, and Alex. I'm I'm doing all right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, was... not yet. There's bound to be something that isn't right, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let me admit Ray Spallone. Now, uh, Ray, I have, I know Ray exists because Ray has always written me about stuff. Are you there, Ray? Ray, are you there? 
Uh, he's connecting to audio. It says. I know it's ke- connecting to audio, but he's not. I'm oh. going to give him another couple of seconds, and then I'm ditching him. Uh, hmm. Just uh, nothing there. Okay. Well, try again, will you? Okay. Try again. Uh, let me see here. Let me remove him, and that's okay. And we remove him. So anyway, what's your problem, Phil? Uh, it was a water thing this morning. Uh, I had to take the walk of shame. Why? Uh, what happens is I, I drink the water before I get the radiation 40 minutes before. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, it was sloshing around in there, but it wasn't going to the bladder. And so they get me on the table. Uh, they do the, uh, the scan and they said, no, nope, it's not full enough. Mm-hmm. So then you're you're off. You walk back down to the waiting room, and uh, you drink a little more water, and you wait. I, I waited about 20 more minutes, and boom, it fired, and there I was. But uh, it was the walk of shame. What do you mean the walk of shame? Well, you walk back from the, uh, from the radiation room to the waiting room because uh, you, and uh, you had At one point, chair. I had too much in my bladder, and they made me go empty part of it. Uh, they didn't complain ever about too much. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I they said it's too full. Go, go. Can you can you let it all out and then drink it again and we'll wait another forty minutes? I said, what if I just let out enough? Yeah. And they said, if you can do that, do it. And I went and I did it, and um, um, uh, then I laid on that gurney for another forty minutes, really wanting to pee because once you start peeing, right, to you, stop you, in midstream is impossible. Yeah. My, my latest problem is I have these urges, these horrible urges to urinate, and I just yeah. got to. So I may have to run off in the middle of all of this. I I don't know. Usually, while I'm doing the show, it doesn't happen. I don't know why, but yeah. Well, that's been the side effect that I've had from the radiation is uh, urge to pee a lot. Yeah, it's a, like a real. Ugh. Yeah. I was in the. Uh, I was in the elevator yesterday getting the mail. I was coming up, and all of a sudden, I got that urge, and I kind of, yeah. I was running like crazy. But anyway, folks, you don't want to know about this. This is what old people do. This is old yeah. people stuff, right, Jeff? You know what old people stuff Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Does anybody notice something different about me tonight? Uh, you don't have a beard. Yeah. Here, here, no. here, here. What? So you shaved the beard? Well, not really. Oh. <laughs> what I did is I have, you know, I have a, a razor, right? And you can take the uh, thing off of it. You can take it, it like you have a, uh, it has like a, a trimmer on it. But you can take the trimmer off and then you can kind of like just cut along and, you know, do the, get rid of this here and so on. And I forgot to put the trimmer back on and I went and zip. <laughs> and, and I got a whole notch in here, so I, I decided I better do the whole, get rid of the whole thing, and now I'm just letting it grow back. So it probably it'll probably be okay in about a week or so, you know, or something like that. So meanwhile, <laughs> so. you you should have done like the mutton chops, you know? Uh, did you have enough to to do the Fu Manchu? Or, you know, I you know? should have done that. Yeah. I should have yeah. done the mutton chops. I used to have mutton chops, but I should, I, yeah, I should. It was like right here, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, I could have just done away with that middle part. Why? Well, I was I was so panicked by what happened that, you know, I just went completely for it. So anyway, here I am. Yeah, you look younger. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'd just shave the whole mustache off and look completely younger. Uh, I don't know. That might be part of your persona. I don't want to look old like Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look old. No, he actually, he's, he's, you know, he's going to look better five days dead than we look right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 75, almost. You're 75, almost. 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 Yeah. So you're yeah. 74 and three quarters, huh? Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, um, uh, that's pretty good. Hello, Brian. Hello. Saw you yesterday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, really quick. And then uh, everybody got up from their table and 
started walking, so I had to bail out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we caught you at work. Yeah. Yeah. Because we do sometimes. It, it, so it's funny. I, I, you know, seen your friend, Shecky, on the, you know, on there. Mm -hmm. But he always has his camera or his iPad really strange. Yeah, well, that's Shecky. I know, and then, but then I clicked on his page and I see him and I actually see him standing and like normal person. <laughs> it's do, just so do, weird. Do you know something about Shecky? He invented the selfie. Literally. Uh -huh. uh, what he would do, he would take trips all over the world and then to show where he was and put himself in the picture, he would hold the camera out here and shoot mm -hmm. himself. Uh -huh. And he was doing that for 20 years maybe uh -huh. before the selfie ever came along. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and now that the selfie has come along, he doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, he just said, Fuck it. If everybody else is doing it, you know, why should I? Yeah. So anyway, so I've just uh, and today I don't know my breathing's a little off today. It, it there's something in this apartment, and I can't put my I can't I can't figure out what it is exactly. Mm -hmm. Because I go out and I feel a little better. I also think, I fi after five months, I'm finally getting squirrely. Yeah. So maybe you just need a safe zone in the apartment where the air is filtered, and uh, yeah, but, you know, and see if that's the issue. Yeah, but then I go out and I buy one of these filtration systems, and if that isn't what it is. Then I've just spent 500 bucks on a filtration system. I think uh, uh, Jason said, get it at Costco. It's a hundred and something bucks. And if it doesn't work, bring it back. You need, need a heavy duty one. You really do. Well, just do one room. What, well, do you mean just what do about windows? Is it is it hot there? Are you using the AC or the we're using, windows We're using open? the AC now, but then out in the rest of the apartment, Marjorie likes to leave the windows open. Uh -huh. And so who knows what's coming in? Have you changed your AC filter? Yes. I, I know it's a really new one in that room. I, I go and I, I wash you wash them. Oh. You know, you don't have to buy a new one. You wash them. What, 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 what era are you living in? Wash them with the disinfectant bleach and then you won't get coronavirus. That's right. Because it puts you puts it all in the air. Listen, uh, you know, you know, we've had this mouse problem. Um, one mouse. And, and I, no, not one mouse. It's got to be more than one mouse. So we found one dead one morning. And so Marjorie goes, I'm not touching that. So I got these tongs out, right? And I picked them up and put them in the garbage can because that's what my mother did. You know, she would do the tongs, right? <laughs> so uh, today, yeah, what was it yesterday? Marjorie says, I wake up. And there is in the, uh, in my, on my uh, phone, a picture of a dead mouse. Ooh. So I said, oh, you found another Ooh. one? She says, better than that. She says it was in the dishwasher and it was, oh. it was running oh, around. So I went and got the things, the tongs, and I yeah. crushed its head. Oh. Oh. She, she killed, oh. she killed oh. the mouse. It's now, are those, I, I like are those the same tongs you use for your ribs? Yeah, same ones I use. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the thing, though. I told her, I said, you didn't have to kill the mouse. You could Just take the tongs, the window. throw them out the window. I <laughs> said, <laughs> and, 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 and you're not, you, you not going to kill the mouse because the mouse is going to, you know, float to the bottom. It's going to go to the mouse heaven. And it's and, not going uh, to go well, splat when it gets on the like bottom. The, line. What, what was not the movie? Uh, yeah. the, the the mouse went to a, a circus. Uh, a a green it. Mile. Hold on green. a second. Uh, Ray Spallone, are you there? See, he keeps calling, and then he's never he's not there. His camera is off. His microphone is on. Okay, ask to start video. I'll ask him to start the video. And if he doesn't in a couple of seconds, goodbye, Ray. Okay. Uh, gone. He's gone. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, so I, so that's what she did. She actually squashed the mouse's head and then threw him in the garbage. And I went, you murderer, you. You know. Did squeal? Huh? Was it squealing? I no, not anymore. Not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, apparently not much if Alex couldn't hear him. So then we then we uh, we had to uh, we had our super come up and he did a few things like he had to move a counter and put some spackling in there to seal it off so they can't get through there. And then he called the rodent guy and he came in and dropped what he called really kill him rodent yeah, no food. Okay. <laughs> It's not the stuff, it's not decon, which they go, mm, oh, decon, I don't like that taste. What else is there? You know, this thing supposedly really kills them. But I also sent away for some peppermint spray. Me and supposedly too, if you spray with peppermint sp spray, don't like the smell? well, here's Hubble Plank Jr. And I think Hubble Plank Jr. is somebody we That's know. Jeff. Of course. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, let me see here. What's his name again? A Hubble Plank uh -huh. Jr. Nope. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it's Pascal. Huh? It's Pascal. Uh, let me see here. What's his name again? Pascal. You haven't changed it then. Pascal Prudhoe. No, it says uh, uh, Hubble Plank Jr. That was the last one. This uh, is the so, new one. Somebody oh. turn, somebody's oh. got their audio oh. up. <clears throat> now it just now changed to Pascal Prudhoe. Yeah. Prudhoe. Yeah. Pascal Prudhoe. Where, where's that audio coming from? Pascal. Now change to Pascal Prudhoe. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. All hey, right. There you go. John Larkin just got rid of the extra Pascal audio. Pascal Prudhoe. Pascal Trudeau. See, that's that's to screw up the AI algorithms. I don't want my real name in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Why not? That's I don't know. I just don't want my real name in there. So, so they won't be able to track my history. You think they care? Uh, probably <laughs> not, but just the same. Anyway, um, so um, um, so that was the mouse killing in our mm -hmm. apartment, you know. And um, uh, the trouble with the mice mouse is he keeps eating our potato chips. Oh, yeah. and Put them in Tupperware. He creates these really nice little holes. He's a it was a very neat mouse. Yeah, you see him on the chair. You well, they get into Tupperware. You know, Betty DeVos needs the money. Yeah, uh, uh, we actually had a thing with a plastic top on it, some pretzels, and he had mm -hmm. actually chewed through that. Wow! So we put tin foil on top of it. You know, the thing is, we're mouse proofing our house. We shouldn't have to do that. It's a pandemic you know? too. He's still living. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's fuck the pandemic. pandemic. I'm I'm having less of a problem with the pandemic than I am with the goddamn <laughs> mouse. You know. It's so anyway. Bad. By At the least way, they aren't rats. By the way, the pandemic's going really good, isn't it, Charlie? Out your way. Oh, it's been Got another record today. Another. <laughs> what was the record today? Ten thousand twenty-eight. First time over ten thousand for the state oh. of Texas. For whole state, yeah, for one day. Because I think Florida has more per day. I think they're yeah, beating you out. Oh yeah, Florida. I think it has gone all the way up to fourteen thousand in one yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did they say what the age group is that uh, Texas is experiencing this? Because uh, I haven't seen any. They say about fifty percent are below the age of forty-four. Okay, and and that group is not dying and going on wrong. Respirators. Wrong. Uh, uh, as much as no, uh, not as over. much, but they are more dangerous <clears throat> than the people who are on respirators. People who are on respirators, we know where they are. The yeah, younger they're, they're people, mostly. who the younger people are getting it, are either asymptomatic or don't give a shit, and give it to other people, and then the older that? population gets it. And the point is, is that you're going to see many more deaths in a couple of weeks because of the older people that got it from the younger people who didn't yeah. give a shit, or the older people are going to shoot the younger people to keep them away from. You know, I mean, there was one guy, there was a gay guy, they, you know, we have Fire Island, and then we have the Pines, and the Pines is the homeland for the gays, okay, if I can put it that way. And there was a guy who did a, um, a, a, a what do you call it, uh, where you, you know, maybe a, a, just a, a message thing that he put out on his Facebook page saying, I've got coronavirus. I've got the virus. I've tested positive for it, and I'm going to um, 
going out to uh, Fire Island this weekend to the Pines to see how many people I can infect. Nice. Isn't uh, I, when people did that at, during the time of AIDS, they considered that uh, like an assault or yeah, uh, it is yeah, it was criminal. It, it is. was criminal. Yeah. And then the guy put up a new thing saying, "I'm sorry, I said that and did that." And, you know, he apologized. I didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. But I mean, it, it, the fact is, you're younger. It doesn't really matter. There are people. For instance, we just had a guy. He was a Broadway actor, 41. He died of yep, AIDS. He died. he died of Corona. You know, <clears throat> so you know this notion that because you're young, you're not going to die. Uh, if you're young, you might not die, but you're going to get hospitalized. You know. Did he have any underlying mm -hmm. uh, uh, things that you know, may have? Uh... No, no. He was perfectly healthy. Perfectly healthy. You want to laugh? Alex, I went for my COVID test at NYU. My brother took me. Mm -hmm. So I was wait they let me in, right? So I was waiting in the waiting room. They were six feet apart. And I felt bad. There was one old guy there with a walker. And then when everybody else was coming, I was watching the age. He seemed like okay, but he was getting tested. And then I was watching just to see who the age when they were coming in. So I'm 50, and I noticed a lot of people coming in. They were younger than me. Mm -hmm. And I was and they were coming in one after the other, like boom, boom. I asked the nurse in the back when she did my nose. They just stick it up there, like you said, like five seconds and five seconds, and you just take it out. Yeah. I said, oh. She says, "Wear nonstop. It's a little uncomfortable. It's nonstop." Really? And this is Tony. How yeah. far did they stick it up? I actually felt it felt like a tickle because it went up here, like to my nostril up here. That's it. And they hold it there for five seconds, and they move it, and then they do the other one. It was uncomfortable, but it wasn't too bad. I just closed my eyes, really. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, what, what the hell? Why'd you, is, why'd you do it? Because I'm going for a colonoscopy Thursday. Oh, and, and you had to, to have it, yeah. Huh. I get to do the poop. I, I can't call tomorrow because I'm going to be on the bowl, I think. Well, that's going to be more pleasant than the, uh, the COVID test. Oh, <clears> well, well I'll, I'll tell you something. I... Um, uh, you know, when I had, I don't know if, if Phil had to do this, but because of all the various procedures that I had, like uh, whatever, I used to have, I had to do that several times, that mm -hmm. whole that whole prep that you yeah. would do for colonoscopy, I had to do for my operations, for my, um, um, what do you call it, for the, uh, uh, the seed implant. So oh, I've had to do, and then I had to do that twice because the first time they couldn't do it because the the uh, the equipment hadn't arrived, uh, and so I had to do it a second time. Did you get this one, Alex? I got the good one. Oh no this no 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 no! You don't do that one. You don't want to do that one. I'm doing this one. Oh, have fun. It's bad news. I got to measure it up to. There's this thing called citric. Uh, I'm trying to remember its last name, and it's a little bottle. And you get it at a drugstore, and you get two bottles of it, and you drink one the night before, and then at some point you poop your brains out, and then you the next morning do it again to clean yourself out, and that's it. But that, that stuff, that stuff, that prep stuff, to begin with, that prep stuff costs about fifty or sixty bucks. Yeah. And then on top of it, on top of it, on top of that being the ripoff. The little bottles of stuff, the citric, uh, have it in the, in, the, in here. In uh, uh, the citric, whatever, uh, only costs like five bucks. Holy three shit, that's bucks. A good business. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, when are you going to take that stuff? I got to take it tomorrow at five o'clock, the first bottle, and then two in the morning, the next one. Can you wait till we get on the air? <laughs> Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who was it? It was Kevin who had to do that. And then he actually it. took it before he went on the air. And then we tried, we were all taking bets how long it was going to be before he had to poop. Oh, my God. So my mother was like, how bad is it going to be? I said, Mom, you don't remember when you did this? I don't remember. She was bad. I had a... It, it, she it, it, look, look, <laughs> it, you know, uh, the, uh, the process itself, the, you know, the colonoscopies, easy peasy. That's in my. That's what you said, right? Even Shecky said it. You don't even. Here's a question, Alex. I was going to ask you because I'm a little nervous. I'm like you. I never got put under before. Well, I even know it's intervenes. What do you just go out like that and that's it? What happens is they stick the needle in your arm, uh -huh. and then they don't tell you when they start shooting you the juice. But once they do, you go 
uh, you go out so that the next thing you know, you don't know you've been out, is the doctor looking at you and saying, well, it's all through a finish. Oh, yeah. How strong is that then? It's they like it, it. it's like somebody has edited 25 yeah. minutes out of your life. Oh, wow. They tell you to count backwards from 100, and by the time you get to 97, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Yeah. When, when they did it to me, they didn't give me any sedative. They just did it. Uh, but, That's because they didn't like you. <laughs> yeah. No, it, actually, what, the, what what I got was something different. It was called a zig. A zig oh, sig a, sig sigmoid osteopathy. Sigmoid osteopathy. Yeah. Well, that doesn't go all the way up. I have one of those, and you, they don't yeah. put you out for that. Yeah, that's what I, I had. That sucked anyway, too. That was horrible. But. But and you're, and you're not put out for the sigmoidoscopy. Right, they, right. Uh, they give you something, but it, you're not out. Yeah. They don't give me shit. What'd you say? No pill or something. They don't so give they you shit, give shit. But you they give them a lot of shit. Yeah. You still anyway. had to do the shit stuff the night before. Yeah. Yeah, I had but, to drink but the. Uh, anyway, uh, it, no, but it, it, the 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 point is that the uh, you you're, you're it's the worst part is the prep, okay. That's what the doctor said. Exactly that. He says the worst part is the prep, drinking this stuff. Yeah. And, sh and and you should ask him about this citric. Uh, what's it called? Citric. Uh, I got a couple of bottles of it here. I was getting to the point where I was drinking it like it was uh, citric soda. Citric nitrate. Cit citric nitrate. Yeah. And okay. and it comes in various flavors, and you just put it in the. Yeah. You chill it. I I put it on ice. I you know, got it cold, and then I. Um, I'm afraid I'm I, 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 I then just put it in a glass one, chug a lugged it, and then I waited till, uh, and then nothing happens for about an hour, hour and a half. You told me to walk around the house maybe to keep active and to maybe make it come out quicker. I mean, I don't know if I have to do that. You yeah. don't have to worry about it coming out quicker. It'll come. And, and, and every time I've done it, my doctor has commented on how clean I, I came out, how clean I was. <laughs> And yeah. I, I'm going, gee, if, I, if I, I've if i never accomplished anything else in my sure. life, pooping uh, for this was, you know, having a clean bowel was my gift to mankind. They give you a bottle brush? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know. But, um, so don't worry about it. Well, yeah, I just say, I guess they'll just knock me out and it'll be it then. I, yeah. I have to call them back. If you're going to wake me up, I'm going to tell the doctor, don't fuck up. <laughs> like, he just called me up for the colonoscopy. I've never had one before. I had a sigmoidoscopy, and I use that fit kit every year. But this year, they uh, they said, okay, boom. Yeah, well, you should have it. Uh, I uh, um, I just wrote my my doctor, my the doctor did my prostate stuff, because I haven't heard from them. You know, and they said that money. After, they said after three months we'll go and do the CT scan. Well, they were going to do it after a month, but then they said we can wait three months on that because you don't want to come up here because of the COVID, right? And I, so I said, well, yeah, when the coast is clear. And then I didn't get my blood tested until the coast was clear. And then I, I did my blood test about three weeks ago. Didn't hear a word from the nurse, nothing, and I haven't heard anything from them. And now I know that you know, I mean. I'm sure they got whatever I had as to whether it grows back is another question, but they got whatever I had, but they just wanted to do this for, they said it was, di it wasn't for diagnostic purposes. It was for record keeping. So, you know, I mean, but come on, you know, it's, uh, it's time now. You should call me. I, I care that the guy's looking after my prostate remembers that I'm here. Yeah. Alex, I, I remember a joke you told way back in the Live 105 days, and it went something like this. Yeah, I had to go get a prostate exam, and uh, shit, the doctor didn't even invite me for a drink out first or, or something like that. <laughs> well, I remember I had this this uh, urologist, right? And he was the head of urology at St. Francis Ho Hot uh, Hotel, St. Francis <laughs> Hospital in San Francisco. And he was very good, supposedly very good. And, and I went to see him, and um, I, um, uh, he then said, you know, lean over and let me do the finger thing. And I lean over, and he stick it, sticks his finger up my butt, and he squirms around a little bit in there, you know, and roots around like he's a gopher. And um, 
I went, after, I, I said, are you through yet? He says, yeah, I'm through. He says, you know, my problem is the small fingers. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> why did you go into urology if you have small fingers? You, got no baby you know, there's got to be guys who go to the urology conventions and go, hey, that, that Bob, he's got a set of fingers on him. He can do a <laughs> prostate exam from another state, you know. <laughs> Um, and then he would do it and he would like, he would move in and then mm. I would move and then he would move in and I would move. They don't stick and against I, the table? I, I said, eventually we wound up, wound up on Clay Street uh, mm. doing a sex show. You know, I mean, it was just, uh, he, he, but he, he was, you know, I liked him though. He was a good doctor. He was a good doctor. I don't see how they feel, you know, what, you know, they say they're feeling for stuff, but they, they're in there such a short time. They got a glove on. They're used know. to doing this. They're, they're taking their finger and they're swirling it around to see if you've got uh, any any hard spots, which would be tumors. Yeah. Remember Bubble Bubbles lying, right? That the doctor is it is it right for him to have both hands on his, his shoulders? Yeah. Yeah. Remember <laughs> Bubbles had that line. Yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, that's that's that. Anyway. Um, I think I haven't heard of I haven't heard fireworks at all tonight. They're out of them. I think they're out of them finally. But I saw a report in from Colorado because uh, uh, CBS CBSN carries all these stations from around the country, all their newscasts. And I was watching the one from Denver to see what's happening in Denver. And guess what their big report was? A shot from the sky of all the illegal fireworks displays going on. L.A. also, yeah. Yeah, I mean it was terrible. Excuse me, my nose is itchy. Uh, they're having fires uh, somewhere. Uh, I'm, I forgot where, where it was, but uh, I wonder if they were caused by illegal fireworks. Well, there were. There was a big fire in an apartment building. It was caused by one of the fireworks, and some kid got hurt because one of the fireworks came in through their front window. Oh, jeez. You know, and why the police don't do anything about it, and our, our de Blasio, the fucking asshole mayor that we've got, uh, made a statement about, well, we're not really cracking down on these guys. What? What? They're, they, Marjorie couldn't sleep on July 4th till 5 o'clock in the morning. They were lighting them off. You guys know how to celebrate. Huh? No, they're not celebrating. They're annoying little pieces of shit. Well, you, you've had, what, 120 shootings uh, in New York? In, uh, well, yeah, we've, and, 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 and unfortunately, one of them wasn't de Blasio. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's another thing. Uh, de, Blasio, de Blasio is getting a lot of heat for that. See, here's what I knew was going to happen, okay? We had the COVID. People mm -hmm. stayed indoors, okay? They stayed indoors all winter mm -hmm. for the winter part. That was easy. It's, it's cold out there. I can make it through. This is We're doing this. But then all of a sudden it gets Sunday and you look out the window and the birds are singing and they're taunting you, right? And you want to get out, and you want to see what's going on, okay? So people are start. I said people are going to be so squirrely that it's going to take its toll on us, and now it's taking its toll. All these murders in New York, all these shootings in New York. This is all people being stuck indoors. Well, that's what uh, De Blasio is saying. It's because of COVID, uh, and I'm sure that that has. Uh, uh, late, you know, uh, has a part in it. Uh, although I think that there's a uh, there's an air of uh, that people can get away with stuff like exigent circumstances that uh, they can do stuff that they couldn't do or wouldn't nah, do before. Nah. Uh, be, uh, nah. Because oh, they the police they're they're being uh, they're being pushed nah. to. Nah. Uh, do anything? No, I think it. It. it, all, it, it I think it does have to do with the COVID, and it has to do with the being pent up. I mean, all these fireworks. Why this year and no other year? The fireworks. So you think the little drive-by shooting people? Oh, look! Uh, 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 you, uh, you, do you see that little six-year-old in the Bri South? Brian Bronx? Neary's got a picture. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those are people doing. Those are homemade fireworks, right, Brian? That's across the street. Oh boy. 
Oh, right now? Wow. No, no, not right now. This is 4th of July. Right Where across the street. I mean, big, big fireworks. I mean, they cost yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Where do you live? In San Jose and Amade Valley. San oh, okay. Jose. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, you know, I mean, it, 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 has to, it has to do, all of this has to do with people having been pent up and stuck indoors and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, because, you know, our town has been in pretty good shape where it's come to, to guns and shootings and so on. Well, Last year, we had the lowest amount of shootings we've had in years. It's up 200 percent. It's up 200 percent right now, you know. Uh, did you see the video of the little girl walking in the crosswalk with her father in the South Bronx? No. Some guy pulls up with a car, mm -hmm. and this is not the first people he shot, but he shot the father, mm -hmm. and he uh, and and the little girl ran off, uh, and it was just a drive-by. And I guess they shot two people prior to that, just randomly, and uh, those people lived. But and they've arrested, I believe, the driver and the uh, passengers in in that uh, in that car. But these are the kinds of things that are happening. Do you think that those people actually quarantined? Uh, you know, the the ones that are running around with guns. Shooting I people think I rough? think I think it has a lot to do with just you know the fact that it's 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 weird out there. You know, Marjorie today for the first time in five months went to her office. To go pick up wow. the mail, she said it was stacked up like that, wow. and and um, she said it was just eerie downtown, you know, mm -hmm. empty, quiet, nobody yeah. there, St no, stores the boarded up. Yeah, I'm I'm working on in Union Square right now mm -hmm. uh, on the Saks Fifth Avenue store, mm -hmm. and uh, there's there's nothing going on. There's no people. The store is open oh, too. By the way, I heard a great thing about Union Square. Every now and then, you learn something you never knew before. Yeah, you know that big podium, that big tower that goes up with a woman on the top of the tower in yeah. in in Union Square. Well, okay. that was a young girl who was, I think, about. 14 at the time when they had her pose for that statue. Um, later on in life, about five years later, when she was, I think, 19, she married the heir to the Spreckles sugar fortune. Was that Amy Spreckles? No. Wow. I, 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 I don't know what her name I worked was. Her. I don't know what her name was. <laughs> This was years and years and years ago. Oh, it was in the and, 70s. and he was in his 60s. Yeah. And that's where we get the term. Are you ready? Sugar daddy. Wow. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. I always yeah. wanted to know what that came from. Mm hmm. Wow. It came from uh, this woman marrying the Spreckles fortune, sugar fortune. This must have been the, the daughter. She, she, was out, she was in a plane crash, and she had uh, burns on her face. Uh, this I was years. This was like in the 1900s, Phil. Oh, okay. Well, maybe this is a great-granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it, you know. The, uh, <laughs> that, the hotel there had, had the, the first Hollywood sex scandal. In that hotel there. Well, in the St. Francis Hotel, you had the Patty yeah. Arbuckle thing. Patty Arbuckle raped that. that no, he teenager. didn't. No, he did not. He wasn't he even at the party. He, he wasn't, wasn't even there. at the party. He held the party, but he wasn't even there. He was driving up from L.A. when the rape supposedly took place, but it wasn't a rape. Oh, yeah? She, she hemorrhaged internally. She was a prostitute. Her name was Virginia Rappé. Try that name on for size, okay? Virginia Rappe, and she she was a kind of a minor light in Hollywood, trying to break into movies. But to get by, she was a hooker, and so she wow. went to the party in San Francisco, and she was like really drunk, and a bunch of people took her and to sober her up, put her in a tub of ice, and the tub of ice caused her uterus to rupture, and she died. So then they, ch you know, uh, uh, everybody wanting to have a story. The Hearst papers started uh, uh, going after Fatty Arbuckle, and that you know they put him on trial for murder when he didn't even have sex with this woman. So that was three, the first three time. trials, two hung juries. The third one, let him go. 
and said this is one of the most horrible things that's ever happened to anybody to have well, to be given uh, put up with these charges. Is know? that the first example of fake news? No, it wasn't. Hearst was good at <laughs> fake it, news. But it ruined his career, though. His his career was out. Well, over not. That. I'm you know, Shecky's my source on a lot of this stuff, and he said no, that isn't exactly true. His career as a movie star was finished and his time as fatty arbuckle was over but he worked movies for a good five six years until his death at 36 oh, really? yeah uh, directing films under the name will be good yeah. oh wow yeah I didn't know that yeah didn't you say that they used his old films uh, to to, uh, to blow up, uh, you know, the silver nitrate the, or whatever. The it silver was. nitrate was very flammable, and they would use it to blow up cars in movies. Yeah, because uh, hey, go get some Arbuckle's films. We're not going to need those any longer. So that's yeah. why they don't exist anymore. No, they do exist. There's a lot of Arbuckle's still available, but Arbuckle yeah. was, and you, you, you don't know this because you weren't around then, was probably the biggest star in the world. He was bigger than Charlie Chaplin, hmm. you know, and... Uh, That's why they called him Fatty? Huh? So he was bigger? He was, was fatty. fatty. He was fat. Kind of chubby, yeah. He's a, and he's the guy yeah. who discovered uh, Buster Keaton. Hmm. Uh, you know, so, I mean, uh, it's a sad story. It's a very sad story, and uh, he wasn't even there. You know, he, he was driving up at the time. When he got there, I think she was already dead. But the newspapers latched on to him. They then showed pictures of this woman who was skinny and small and his big hulk of a body, and, oh, he probably just pounced on her, and, and he's the one that uh, uh, you know, blew out her uterus. And then... Was a Coke bottle. No. Now, how that rumor came about was a guy from the Hearst papers asked the doctor... How could she have an internal hemorrhage like that? And he said, well, it could be from the insertion of something like a Coca-Cola bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where that came from. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing story. It really is. Um, and they've done some movies of it, you know, about it. Uh, but in, in the third trial, uh, they found him completely innocent and said this was one of the greatest injustices it's ever been to anybody. That was the jury making that statement. And uh, he, he was let go, but it ruined his career. It ruined his career as a movie star. Hmm. So anyway, Charlie, your governor is really a piece of work, isn't he? He's an asshole. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The, I mean, DA, the district attorney or whatever that other guy is is a bigger dick. Who? Oh, the uh, uh, Oh, oh, you're uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor. The Lieutenant yeah. Governor. What's his name? Lynch. Dan Patrick. <laughs> Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick. Yeah. A fucking moron. Isn't Dan Patrick a uh, sports? Yeah, he he's, guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. he does a pod, pod, uh, podcast. Hey, did you hear? Uh, he I'm surprised you didn't mention that book, Phil. Alex, did you hear about the book by Trump's family member that might come out? Oh yeah, that's gonna that, kill. Ooh. Doesn't that's, say that's too much. Uh, the leaks say, don't say too much good about Trump's dad. No, no they don't. Her father. Oh, hey, here's he another little piece of trivia I came up with this weekend. Yeah, I think keep finding a little piece of information that you all should know. Trump, okay. uh, Trump's grandfather, you know, the guy who owned the hotels and whorehouses up in Alaska? Yep. Uh, who was the father of Fred Trump, who was mm -hmm. Donald really? Trump's dad. Um, he died... Uh, years and years, I think years before Donald was born. Mm -hmm. uh, and what do you think he died of? Syphilis. Syphilis. No. Uh, no. no. Uh, alcoholism? No. Uh, I, I oh, kind of, in the flu yeah. epidemic. Absolutely, you're correct. Charlie yeah. gets the prize. Yeah. Ding, 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 Spanish ding. flu. Was, was that oh. the Spanish flu? Yes. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> he, got, he, he told his he told his son Fred, senior Fred Trump, uh, that uh, he wasn't feeling well, and two days later he was dead from the Spanish flu. Yeah, so it's kind of ironic, you know, that Trump doesn't have a little more sensitivity where yeah. Corona is concerned, considering <clears throat> his grandfather died of the Spanish flu. 
Well, Those you know, were some of the quotes from the Mary Trump uh, book was that he didn't, uh, that uh, he sort of had to protect himself. I guess it's Fred Sr. The, he was, Fred Sr. Uh, was a bully to his kids. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, they were always looking for, uh, you know, to not get beat up. But uh, I guess they were pretty abused. Well, I mean, um, Donald's brother uh, mm -hmm. had an alcohol problem that eventually killed him. Um, because he was supposed to take over the family business. All of a sudden, one day, Daddy decided that he wasn't going to be any good. And so he started grooming Donald. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but she claims that Donald was, is completely fucked up. And he's completely fucked up because of his father. That his father just did a number on him. Yeah. I guess there are a lot of people that you know, have gone through that kind of stuff. I was lucky I had a great dad. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'd feel sorry for him if it wasn't being inflicted on us. You know, but I Notice, mean. Notice, uh, you know, it was, it's, it's his younger brother who filed the suit against uh, Mary Trump. Did you notice that? Yeah. Because cause if, if Donald Trump, then he'd get drug, he could get drug into court and discovery he would you know he'd have to produce all kinds of documents he so might not, with his, oh, well, i don't know what he might, to, he, not, he might not be eligible to sue because he's a public figure well i no, no he, i think uh, uh, the son is his son is suing also because i think um they feel that he's distant enough from the whole situation i mean he certainly has no right to sue he's not even mentioned in the book yeah. Well, the, well they're suing over they're suing over the lawsuit there supposedly was a uh, non -dis non disclosure agreement over the uh, settlement of the estate but uh, she's claiming hey they ripped me off on that it settlement it was totally fraudulent so the non disclosure doesn't matter anyway and yeah. they're not going to contest it they're they're gonna the books already out well, they can sue her for all and, they want to the books out you yeah, know? and uh, uh, I, it's probably going to sell pretty well. It's a short book, and uh, she kind of nails him on a lot of stuff, like the fact he that, could, he, he could, that he that he paid could, somebody he paid somebody to take his SATs. Yeah. Uh, now the person that they said he paid, his name was Shapiro, and he was he's dead now, but he was married to Pam Shriver, who was a tennis uh, champion, and uh, Pam Shriver says that uh, her husband, this Joe Shapiro, would never have done that and, and denies no, that Trump... It's not the same one. It's not the same Joe Shapiro. Uh, that, that, that's bogus. No, yeah. no, I, I, I read it today. Yeah. Uh, Where? Yeah. I, on, on Breitbart? No, not on Breitbart. Well, where'd and, you read it? I didn't read it. I, Washington it, Times? It was, oh, it was probably in that one that says N for news. It's uh, like an NBC thing. It, it it had some stuff on the book and 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 so forth, but uh, so there was a quote from the uh, this Pam Shriver, I think her name. Uh, I I I may have heard of her. She was some sort of tennis star. Boy, you're really giving us some real good information here, Phil. You certainly got all the facts. I mean, you know, you read this stuff, you know, you're going to talk well, then, about. Well, then, yeah, but but uh, but at least get your facts straight. You don't seem to know her name even. Well, that's her name, Pam Shriver. And uh, uh, she's, uh, she was a, a, a tennis champion and uh, I think fairly well respected. And she says that, you know, her husband was a straight arrow and would never Yeah, but she that. doesn't know what he would have done and, when he was money, young. Money, 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 money. Well, yeah. And he also d said, she said that she didn't meet, the, he didn't meet Trump until they were in school together in uh, college. Now, if he's going to take the SATs and things like that, that's going to be done in high school. So if Phil, we're if listening to the wife, which is secondhand <clears throat> information. This no, and and he kept saying Obama forged his papers to get into Harvard. Yeah, probably, probably, yeah. but he doesn't have people saying that. Where <laughs> Trump has people saying that. Obama got a scholarship to fucking not Harvard. Yeah, you, uh, through the Kenyan. Uh, 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 what was it? The uh, Kenyan consulate. What is it? I was watching a lot of I was watching a lot of Obama over the weekend because on uh, I like YouTube. YouTube is my latest thing to watch because there's a lot of stuff there, 
And so I mean, we're watching a lot of different Obama things, like his inauguration speech and then this thing and that thing, and finding out that he really has incredible comedic timing. Mm -hmm. He's very, very funny. Yeah. You know? Uh, and um, there was some reference he made to, oh, yeah, that's when I was living in Kenya, he said. It was a joke. Um but you know, it's it, it's. Um, he he did live in Kenya for a while, didn't he, with his mother? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, no. oh, okay, I thought he lived there. I think his father left when he was very very young. Yeah, his father was from Kenya, but they, they she, he met. I, th I think he met the mother, his mother, in Kenya. But I think Obama was born in Hawaii, and that's where he grew up. Yeah. But he would visit his father in Kenya sometime, I think. What I loved I watching was the, uh, was the, what do you call it, the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the dinner they have every year, the correspondence dinner. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and um, the one that he did where he put down Donald Trump, who was sitting in the audience. Mm -hmm. And if I could go back in time, I would just tell him, don't do that. Because that you could see that was the precise moment that Trump yeah. decided he hated Obama. Yes, yeah. You can just see it in his face. Just horrible. Yeah. Hey, Alex, Alex, what do you think about John Stewart? What about him? How, I don't know, just anything from New York stuff. He's, at least stuff that I've heard, he's been really active with the firefighters, with with the last stuff well, yeah, on. he did a whole. You know, he was very big into into the uh, um, first responders mm -hmm. and the treatment they were getting from the government, not getting medical help and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah, he's done, done a very good job with that. Mm -hmm. Didn't do a very good job with this movie he just made, but you know, yeah, that's oh. a different story altogether. Hey, did you see it? Yeah. Oh, not really? That good? Not good. No. Not good. That's disappointing. Well, you know, he, he kind of he's kind of a one he may be a one trick pony, John Stewart, oh. you know? Yeah. And the Daily Show may have been his biggest moment, you yeah. know, and and um, uh, a lot of times I mean, the smartest guy in show business that I know of is Jerry Seinfeld, who could have written a contract with NBC to do another show for the most amount of money that any human being has ever been paid in the history of television. He didn't do it. He said, I'm through doing uh, a sitcom, that's it. And he just went away, he did stand up and so on. And then one day he said, ah, it'd be fun to just do interviews with people driving around in a car going to get coffee. And that show worked great. But it was a totally <laughs> different thing. It wasn't the same thing. And, and you know, John Stewart's always trying to kind of stay within the milieu of of politics. Didn't uh, he have another show before that one? Uh, who Stewart? John Stewart? No, uh, Seinfeld. No, uh, no. There was some other show that he had. I don't. No, nope. yeah, he, he was on the Alex Bennett radio show one time over no, on Ninth Street. No. Yeah, That's remember? One, no, it was about the. And you did. You, you used to do. Um, you used to put do your show on TV, like it was on Channel 9 or something? Yeah. For a little while? Yeah. And you, you had uh, Seinfeld yeah, yes, on we shot Yes, we shot some of it, the interstitial parts between the, the film, they were horror films, we would shoot at the That's station. Right, yeah. Captain and, UHF. And, and, no, it wasn't Captain UHF, that was... Yeah, late, you, you were, that, that, oh, that was it. That, that was it. You let me finish, Phil. I know my life, okay? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> No, I, we did it two different ways. We did it with me doing Captain UHF. I can't remember if that came first. The other was that we shot these interstitial programming. It went between during the film um, uh, at the studio. And then whatever guest I had on that morning, we would videotape some stuff with them. And that morning, one of the mornings was, uh, and you remember it, John. I didn't even remember doing it, but I, and yep. there's probably some video somewhere. About, it was like, it. like probably 1990, because I remember, yeah. I remember where I was living when that was in. I used to, I used to go hang out at the uh, John Bull. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, because I lived right by there. So, um, you got any of that video around? No. No, bummer. I may have, I may have, somewhere, I seem to remember having that Seinfeld clip, but it's a very bad copy, mm. you know. But, uh, but, the, but no, yeah. Seinfeld never did a show on television before Seinfeld. No, not before Seinfeld. This was after Seinfeld, nope. but before Coffee. Nope. All right. It was nope. like a game show, I thought. No. No, no, no. Oh, he produced a show. Oh. Um, and I can't remember what the... It was a game show. Yeah. But I, it, was, it was a prime time, prime time game show. Yeah. So, oh, uh, uh, John, uh, it's seattletimes.com is where you'll find that article. SeattleTimes.com. Okay. What article? Uh, the the one that Mary Trump, uh, 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 the uh, Pam Shriver, says uh, that um, uh, in there. Uh, I got to find the paragraph again. But in there, it said that um, uh, Trump hired her husband Joe Shapiro to take the SATs for him. But okay, uh, he, uh, okay. Let's forget the fact. I'll give you that he didn't have somebody pay for his SATs. He's still an asshole, Phil. Doesn't no. matter. He's but still he's, he's still killing Americans. Uh, nah, nah, you're almost killing Americans. You you just blaming everybody else. No, I look look. What, um, wait, what makes you even it, say that, Phil? It's true. It's no, it's the not. most amount of people dead. Uh, no, Six no, 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 not by, not by, not by him, not, uh, not for him trying, you yeah. know, and the reason those people are dead in New York is because your asshole president didn't stop people from coming in from Europe and ch as, as well as China. And we got the brunt of that, Phil. Well, he did. It's the fault of the Chinese for sending people out of Wuhan and, and, and not allowing them to Phil, travel. Phil, Phil. You can blame anybody you want to, but the fact is the buck stops at the president's desk, the at the president's desk, yeah. and he did nothing about it, and me Americans are dead now. He's a murderer. You're no different than Nike. Nike would do business with the Chinese. They, they, they're, they're more interested Phil, we're in not Chinese talking money. about fucking Nike. We're talking about yeah. your boy being but a murderer. I'm talking about the hypocr uh, hypocritical uh, people that would uh, sooner do business with the Chinese. They don't say a word about what they're doing, but uh, and and the fact Phil, that they Phil, 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 the world Phil, the world Phil you have a, a president here who, to this day, almost denies the existence of the virus in this country. And if the president denies that, then nothing is going to really happen to solve the problem. If he doesn't, he doesn't wear a mask. People won't. Some people won't wear a mask. He doesn't deny the existence of COVID nineteen. Oh yeah, oh, really? He's done more to combat it oh, than anyone oh, else. Oh, oh really? In what in the, way, uh, Phil? Including uh, in what uh, getting way, rid Phil? of the WHO. Oh, oh, uh, oh more, you in, just don't even start with me. Don't even start with me during a pandemic. You 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 drop the WHO. Good idea, Phil. And yeah. he's getting into it with Fauci now. Is he? Really? getting a little snippy with Fauci. Fauci's going back at him. No, yeah. see what happens. You this know? man, this man is, is 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 guilty of negligence, murder by negligence. Uh, you, you you can call it what you want. I think it's partisan. It's it's murder. No, it's not partisan. I'm partisan to life. I'm partisan to people being healthy and not having living in fear of dying. Like Jeff's a good example because he's compromised, and uh, I, I don't know how many other people here have, are compromised. Uh, this man, by his inaction and by his negligence, is responsible for the death of over 130 Americans, 30,000 uh, Americans. You, you can tote that line, but I don't believe it. Well, of course not. You're never going to believe it. This guy could go out in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and you would say, ah, oh, that's just Donald. Yeah. Well, he was doing it to get rid of that Black Lives Matter thing in front of his building. You know, in Martinez, California, they painted a Black Lives Matter in front, uh, on the street in front of uh, the courthouse. And some, some couple 
parks their car, gets out with black paint and paints over it. Now they've been arrested and said that it's a hate crime uh, that uh, that they did that. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it. I'd say uh, that's a hate crime. Yeah. I don't think it reaches yeah, that's that a hate. Level. I think that's a hate crime. Well, for but they just painted it black. What do you? So the th- letters are still there, but now they're black. What do you, What do you think, Charlie? Charlie's the one here who has bragging rights. <laughs> About them painting it over, I don't care if the sign is in yellow or if it's in black paint. Either way, it still says BLM. <laughs> exactly. I think they obliterated the BLM. Uh, or it actually spelled out Black Lives Matter. I, I think I think that it was obliterated. I don't believe that you can still make out the letters. Well, I've seen it. Could, yeah. Well, you know, I mean. Um, uh, I kind of think this idea of Black Lives Matter taking up whole streets is uh, kind of looks good, yeah. you know, and um, it's a sign of our times. You know, I just think I just think that when we talk about cops killing people, we forget the cops kill a lot of different people too. You know, that they're just cops and they kill people, especially when they resist. Oh gee, that that's worth that. Uh, the death penalty, resisting, comes with a death penalty, Phil. No, but when it gets to the point where a cop has to fight for his life because of the resistance, you Which know, now there lately? there have been individual circumstances where somebody gets pulled over and all of a sudden they're getting fired upon. Phil, this, this Phil, how many times has that happened? Not very many. All right, then shut up. But there's hundreds and hundreds. Then of shut cops up. How many times have black people? been shot by cops or being choked by cops and are now nine dead nine nine in uh in, in the last year nine in the last year how many cops have been killed as a result 120 something in the last year yeah really yeah i haven't seen that statistic and uh and but there's Did been you just a lot make that more. up uh, no no, I, I read it the other day. Oh, well, I'm, I, I believe everything you read. Yeah, well, I read a lot of cop stuff. You know, <laughs> I get that stuff. What is it, Cop, cop Killer Monthly? What is it? Yeah, it? No. You know what I don't get either, though, what I always find funny with the cops is that how they get, when Cuomo made that comment, uh, you know, just do your job. He made it at one of the press conferences. This is what I don't get, Phil. It's almost like you can't call them out on doing their job. It's like they like they can never get criticized. Who? The cops? Can get criticized. The cops, like, they had the, the police guy for the cops, the head of the cops from New York said that they were, the cops, it was on 10, 10 wins, and they played the clip, and he said, we're not word for word, he said that, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, with the protests going on, the, the cops felt like they were being abandoned. They, they didn't feel like they were worth anything. Like, of course. Uh, they're 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 defunding the departments. They're uh, no, you know. We should be able to criticize them. We're paying their job. They are being criticized. They stand there with people spitting at them, and they don't react. You know uh, what? I, you, no, no, I'm not. In I'm Miami, not. in Miami, that uh, protest where you you had these people in their face. But, but here's my question. I pose thing. Here's my question. I posed here. This is what I would say. We understand. If they don't want that job, then they got to know what it what it entails. They know they're going to be out there with a vest on and a gun, going after these people who are killers. If you don't want the job, then quit. You know that's like saying if you don't want if you don't like uh, the way things are in America, then leave. For a living, no. If well, you've said that, Phil. No, I didn't. Yes, you've said it. But you have to. If if you know what I'm saying, Alex, they should be able to take some criticism. For some of these bad cops, they shouldn't. They pay plenty of Phil, criticism. Uh, Phil, any, did you, did you any, listen if, to Phil, that, Phil, anybody, that audio? Phil, Phil, yeah. anybody that we give a badge to, that we give authority to, that we give a gun to, that we give tear gas to, that we give mace to, we do all those things, I think has to abide by certain rules, okay? Well, and I think I, we I, have a right to tell them what they can do and what they can't do. Well, I sent you guys an audio clip uh, uh, a couple day it was a, a couple days ago it was a Vallejo police officer I believe mm-hmm. and it yeah. was last words on the radio which was tell my kids I love them nope. uh, now these guys get up in the morning 
they put on their uniform and they go out to do a job and they don't know if they're going to come home that night or whether this they're going to choke somebody or whether they're going to choke somebody to death this was a 26 year old cop with a wife and two kids that his last words when he was bleeding out was tell my wife or tell my family i love them but and okay so you can listen to it all the cops for all the bad cops because that one good cop we we're sorry for his death. So it's you know, the other way around. Too. We don't even know if he was a good cop, John. We don't even know if he was a good cop. He just said, "Tell my my children, I love them." But what I but you see, this is what I this is what I don't get, Alex. And I don't mean anything bad for the virus. I don't want to see anybody get killed. But it's almost like saying to the victim who got mugged or or got killed, you know, tell my mom, say if somebody knifed me on my way home today, and I say, oh, to the to the EMS guy, tell my mom I love her. Well, listen, it's a job, though. They don't want that job. They have to know what it entails. Don't take job it. Job doesn't mean you're supposed to get killed. But they know what they're signing up yeah. for. And they also, they're there to enforce the law. And when they tell somebody to put their hands behind their back, and the guy grabs their taser and runs and fires back at them. Shouldn't, you know, that's not the death penalty. That's not the death penalty, though. Was for this guy. Oh, you know. The problem was but, but, is that the guy's Phil, back, Phil. He turned Phil, his back, Phil, and the timing was Phil, wrong. Phil. No, the Phil. problem was if you want to get harassed and, and teased by all this. Fred he was on drugs. He was a felon, and he was going to go back to prison. That's what he didn't want. Phil, well, the cop didn't want to go back and get teased by all his fellow officers Phil, that he got his taser taken by a. By I don't a, think so. The other yeah. cop got uh, body slammed on his head. Phil. So wh- Phil, why did you, know, you know, all night, kick- all night, I don't think Jeff has said almost a single word. Yeah. And mainly because he can't get a word in edgewise. Yeah. Right, Jeff? Um, the story about the cops is <laughs> overdone. It's just, Phil, you, you got to realize, all cops are not perfect people. And a lot of them are pretty lousy people. And people who... And they do a lousy job. And people who are attracted to that work are nece- not necessarily the most stable people in the world. You know? Uh, a lot of times they come out of the military or... Uh, they... Which I think is good. I mean, one of my friends, Alex, was... Uh, my, maybe my sister named Tim. Tim Cox. He's on my page. You could even, I'm going to try to get him to come on your show once. He served voluntarily four years for the Army... Went to the police, worked 24 years for the cops, and he never fired his gun once. Not one time. Because he's been trained for four years before that. He told me, Alex, the dumb cops were on bikes. He used to tell me all these stories. I got to try and have Tim call you. And I told him, I said, he never fired because you know what? I hate to say it. He was already trained in the Army. These guys aren't trained enough, he told me. He told me that. He says, you get guys, he don't even want to walk the full, he wouldn't want to be on a beat with them. Yeah, there's, um, it's it's hard to find people that want to be cops nowadays because, you know, I mean, like in San Francisco, they don't even, they can't even live in San Francisco. It's too expensive. So the, so the cops in San Francisco, they have to live out in Vallejo and stuff. And, you know, so it's, it's. You know, when you when you have to just hire anybody you can get. Yeah. Well, it's it's oh it's always been my argument, John, that if I had one wish, it, you know, they were saying, well, we sh- you should tell your police department what you think you would like to see the police departments do, and I would like to see more beat cops again, cops yeah. who walk the streets and get yeah. to know the neighborhoods they're in, because the only time they ever go into that neighborhood or deal with that neighborhood is from their from their cop car and when they're getting out of it the only time they get out of it is when there's some trouble and it gives them a bad attitude about the uh, neighborhood the the people cops who work a neighborhood should live in that neighborhood you know what he told me Alex? he said they're not trading up in the academy he thinks now he mm-hmm. thinks that he thinks he became a good cop because of his four years of army training really that guy, you know, the academy when you get out then you go into uh, an fto or field uh, officer training program and then uh, that lasts, uh, I think, 18 months. So Is that you know, true there, of every a, police department in the United States, Phil? Uh, in California, it's it's all oh, right. All oh, right, but we're we're, we're talking about we're training. talking about a lot of times the town. Clowns. I can only I can only tell Physical. you about California. Okay, well that's it for tonight. 
hear mm. that? The theme mm. song's going. Oh, oh and, and first oh, wow. of all, let's say good night to um, what's your Adrian. Name? Adrian. Good Love night, Adrian. Adrian. Hello. Oh. <laughs> she, you know, she's so adorable, Brian. I don't know where yeah. she gets mm. it from. You told uh, mommy, you told her she was ugly the other night. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, uh, 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 Tony. And thank you, John Larkin. Uh, mm -hmm. Why doesn't everybody give a big wave goodbye? And I'll give you a wave goodbye back. There we go. There's my goodbye back. And this my goodbye front here. Okay. That's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. Uh, and we'll be assembling a new one again tomorrow night. Uh, Jack Bishop will be assembling one right now, right after we're through here. Next over most of the same cabinet. In the meantime, you know, I'll be back again tomorrow night. 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, wear a mask. Okay. Stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody.